Hey everyone, it's Mojax back in the DJ City UK lab. I've got a tutorial for you today about Record Box and specifically the Pro DJ Link, which is something that a lot of people kind of understand on a basic level, but there are some more in depth things you can do with it, which you know you need to know a little bit more about to actually make it work to the best of its ability. Now, on that basic level, you've got this simple connection. So you've got an Ethernet port on the back of your players. So that'd be CDJ2000, 2000 Nexus, XDJ1000, CDJ900, etc. If I've got that Ethernet port, you can run a simple Cat5 cable across from one deck to the other. Just plug them in and then you can link across and that means you can play music from one deck using the other deck. It means you've got the shared history, the shared tag list and so on as well. Um, the cables are dirt cheap. You know, regular Cat5 cable costs like a buck each. I tend to buy them in batches of 10 at a time because they don't last all that long. So I just buy 10 at a time and make my way through those. Um, and that's nice and straightforward. And if you're using a mixer other than a Pioneer, so something like a Rain or an Allen and Heath or something like that, of course you don't have any further link functionality. So you're just gonna work with that on that basis. When you bring in more decks, so three or four decks, of course you can't daisy chain players together because I've only got one port each. So then you need to get a switch involved, just a simple Ethernet switch. This is a basic TP link one. It's the first result on Amazon. It's like $9 for one of these. I've got a couple of these as well. It's worth carrying one with you if you play on record box on a regular basis because not every club is gonna have the setup done correctly. So yeah, simple five port Ethernet switch. Again, doesn't need to be super fast, just bog standard, nice and cheap, nice and simple. And then you just basically connect in your multiple players. So two, three or four players into that switch. And again, they will all link together. You can play music from one USB stick or SD card across all four decks. No problems there. Now. Where it starts to get a little bit more complicated is when we start to get the mixer involved. Now, this only applies to the DJM 900 Nexus and the 900 SRT and the 2000 and 2000 Nexus. They've all got the link facility on there. They're the only ones in the range that do. When you've got that, you basically hook up your Ethernet port to the, on the back of the mixer, in the case of this 900 Nexus, again, into my Ethernet switch. So now we've got two decks and the mixer all hooked in together and they're all basically linked as part of this big Pro DJ Link network. Now, there are some benefits to that, which make it worth doing. The first one is the on-air display. As you can see, this jog wheel is red and that's because this deck is live. This is playing out now. If I turn the fader down, it goes white again. And again, with a crossfader as well. If I turn the crossfader off, that's now gone white. And it's, you know, when you're dealing with two decks, it's quite easy to know which deck is live and what you're working with. But when you've got three or four on the go, it can get very confusing in the heat of the moment. So it's nice to have that nice visual reference. Okay, that's red, that's live. On the other players that aren't 2000s, you don't get the illumination on the jog wheel. You get a little display on the actual display of the player itself. So that's worth having still. But the main reason to link your mixer with it is to have the synchronized effects. Now, of course, with the regular Pioneer effects, what you do is have the auto detection, so it'll detect the BPM, or you can tap in the BPM or lock it in, as I've shown you in another video. But with the mixer hooked up, you've actually got grid information coming through. So I just leave it on auto, and it will follow the BPM of what's going on with the deck. So as you can see, I've now gone down to 67 BPM. The BPM on the effects display is also 67. And that is really really sick when you're doing a long set it just means you don't have to think about the bpm of your effects all night the only thing you'll ever have to do is change the beat values and so on and the depth and everything else but the actual bpm you never have to worry about it because you know if your grids are right and you've, you've analyzed all your stuff in record box it's just going to be locked to that grid the whole night long and really until you've had that you don't miss it but when you've had it oh, and then you don't have it again you really do miss it it's awesome um, the other thing you can do with the 900 is quantize as well so in this case it's just following it but it's not quite going to lock onto the actual beat when i hit the effect but we hit the quantize button and that means now if i do a roll effect it's going to stay totally quantized to the beat grid that i've set in record box put onto this sd card and it's just really, really nice to have that ability to just lock everything to the beat. And again, if I just set that to a quarter beat and I can change the BPM even on the wide mode, it will stay locked on a quarter beat. So my echo, I can have a quarter beat or a half beat echo. And whatever BPM I go to, that is gonna stay on a quarter, on a, on a half beat echo. Just so, so nice to have that ability. So that's why you'd wanna have it. So how do you actually achieve that? Well. The main thing we have to think about with the link is having the right player numbers for each deck. Now, if you're using a CD, uh, DJM 2000, then that's got individual ports for each player. So you would just set the 
player to auto in terms of the player number and then you plug it into say port number two on the DJM 2000 and it will automatically the mixer will tell it you are deck number two that's straightforward when you're dealing with the 900 you don't have that facility you've got to set it yourself um, to set the B player number on a player you firstly got to eject everything so you have to eject any SD cards USB sticks CDs in there you have to disconnect from the network itself as well so this can be done live in a club you just have to make sure you're playing from this deck for example I can then mess around with the player number on this one and get it all connected properly so we just hold down the menu button until we get into the utility menu go down and change the player number so in this case I'm using it with the 900 I'm not going to leave it in auto I'm going to put it to number two because I'm coming into channel two on the mixer and now when I connect that back up come out there that will be player number two and all of this stuff will work so the on-air display will work the grid BPM information going to the effects will all work as well and that is nice and straightforward but you've got to know about that player number feature so again we just hit utility till the menu comes up go down to player number can't change it now because I've connected the network cable but when, you, when that's disconnected you go in change the number to the actual channel of the mix that you're playing on so you've got to bear that in mind so if you're going this is the deck out here that's going to be on number one I have to set that to number one so one two three four however you've got it set up you can't mess with that arrangement now the last thing I want to talk about is the actual hooking up of a computer to the DJ link as well I've got my MacBook Pro here and again I've just connected that up with the Ethernet cable the USB I've got here is just recording audio today I'm not doing anything with record box and the USB it's all going through just the simple Ethernet port cat5 cable into the Ethernet switch like everything else and that means that I can have my entire collection there loaded onto the computer it doesn't hammer the computer at all it requires very little in terms of CPU because all it's doing this software is literally just streaming audio to the different decks that's all it's doing it's not processing anything at all just sending audio out so you know you don't need a powerful computer for this but you can have your entire library ready to go and that gives you a couple of choices you can browse in the normal way so you just hit the record box button or link on some of the older players and just browse through your entire collection that's on the laptop don't have to look at the screen but if you are a mobile DJ getting lots of requests and that kind of stuff you can use the search function on the player or on the computer rather and then you can just drag a track to each deck that you want to play on so in this case I've gone to deck number three just reset that BPM and now I'm playing from the computer on my CDJ which is cool you know just gives you that full access to your library all that you know proper searching with a QWERTY keyboard and so on as well because the searching can be fiddly on the CDJs it's just really nice to have that option there I carry a laptop to most of my gigs anyway even if I'm using Rekordbox still carry a laptop to be on the safe side so if you do get stuck you need something from your collection just get again if you've got a bunch of these in your bag just pull out another cable hook it up to your switch and you're good to go nice and straightforward so the other thing you can do with that with these mixers as well with the 900 and the 2000s is you can actually cue link as well so what we can do this is playing through now and I can have another you know another deck loaded up over here um, just have a track loaded to that but what I might want to do is actually just play through and cue a track on my computer before I load it to a deck and you can do that you just hit the link you have to go into the preferences in record box and just make sure that you've ticked the option to do that and that is in the audio section use link monitor of pioneer DJ mixers that means now I can actually cue you won't be able to hear this but I am now playing audio through my headphones of this track in my library on my computer while these two decks can be doing whatever they're doing and that's again a nice feature to have it's, it's something you might not need it's not something I use very much because I don't tend to hook up my laptop to my record box system I tend to play off SD cards USB but it's a great option to have there as well so there we go some tips on Pioneer's Pro DJ Link setup it's really as you can see you know you've got the basic setup is so simple one deck one cable to the other deck that's straightforward but actually getting multiple decks involved getting the mixer involved getting a laptop involved really isn't that much more complicated and it's all the same cables it's all just regular cat5 cables you know a buck each on amazon um, you can pick up the tp link router that i've got here the ethernet switch that's nine bucks on amazon you can get a bigger one with eight ports on there but i found the five port one to be enough um, pretty much for all my uses but yeah you know nine bucks not a big investment certainly if you've already invested in the record box stuff or if you're just playing at gigs you know turning up and using it at gigs it's worth having those in your bag so you're ready to get that system rocking really sweetly every time 
Uh, the main thing you've got to remember is that player number stuff. If you're playing on a 2000 mixer, make sure you set it to auto. If you're playing on a 900 Nexus or SRT, make sure you go in and just change each player, each DEX player number to correspond with the right channel on the mixer. Then you'll get the on-air display and you'll get those killer synchronized effects, which is the bit that I really love on it. So nice and simple as you can see. Thank you very much for watching today. Make sure you subscribe for all our future tips, tricks, and product reviews. I'll see you soon.